Hey guys, remember this music? Aren't you just gosh darn sick of it yet? That's right, I actually forgot a couple beans in the desert, so I'm gonna start this video off by, uh, or before the official intro by showing them off. First of all, this one I'm not surprised I missed. It's actually right here, or in the sort of L section uh, after you go up that ramp jump thing and boost your way to the la where the last uh, Pillow Guardian was, or the second last, because the last one's the one with the Torque Screw, but whatever. Uh, we're over here, as you can see, it's really hidden by this rubble, you have to kind of get up in this nook and cranny, that's what she said, in order to find it, so not too surprising that I missed that one. It's a little bit tricky to get. Otherwise, we're going to be heading this way, uh, and I'll show you where the other one is. It's actually fairly nearby, uh, and thanks to everyone who pointed out that I missed a couple beans. I thought for some reason 26 is the magic number, it's actually 28, including the bean by the uh, dream point, so... By the time you go to the dream point, you should have, you can actually see the bean over in the, uh, well, you can see it briefly there in the corner. I'm not sure how I missed this one. I think I just was not paying attention for a momentary lapse of judgment. So one bro bean, one stash bean. I mean, I guess I can go ahead and just throw the stash bean on Luigi now, because it, 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 I'm putting every stash bean. Why do I, why do I, how, how do I have two stash beans? When did, the, oh, that's right, because I got one from the dream point. Well, there you go. Two more st stash beans on Luigi. May as well just put him on the, him now, because I always put all the stash beans on Luigi anyway, and more lucky hits, or more lucky hits! So I'll meet you guys back where I was to officially start this video off. Yeah. Since I forgot to put it in my little bean intro, see? 28! It's the magic number. Hey everyone, this is Lucky7DX! Welcome back to Let's Play Mario & Luigi Dream Team! In the last episode, in my croaky voice, I attempted to explain that we're heading back to Wakeport, or we're heading to Wakeport, or to get a tour group to explore Mount Pajamaja, but we can actually do some stuff on Mount Pajamaja right now, and I actually recommend doing it, because now that this bridge is back, first of all, we can get uh, some some of the uh, beans in the Pillow Castle region, so a little bit of extra beans, always good, but more importantly, we can actually uh, explore Mount Pajamaja a little bit, including, spoilers for what's going to happen this episode, but including getting to the shop, which will actually be vastly, or basically be skipping an entire area's worth of shopping and be able to get some really, really, really powerful equipment for this point in the game. So it's actually a really good idea to make a little detour up to Mount Pajama Joe because, well, you'll have a lot of extra power, especially if the build I'm going for, specifically for hard mode, uh, you get a really, really, really good piece of equipment for hard for uh, the hard mode playthrough. And some pretty good equipment for normal playthroughs as well, so really just recommended to do this whatever. So as you can see, well, now that we're actually able to get back to Mount Pajama Joe, it's actually really cool because, well, we actually only need the ability to uh, do Mini Mario in order to progress. So, because we have Mini Mario, we can just go over here and hit the button, and this goes down, so you don't need anything fancy, you don't need to have a tour group to get to the initial part of Mount Pajama Ja, you just need to be able to do Mini Mario. Unfortunately, because the bridge doesn't come back until this point, this is the only point you actually can go, uh, hit this and continue onward, so... Perhaps they should have made it so the bridge only comes back during, uh... Or the bridge only comes back for you when you get to, uh, past Wakeport, but I guess they are okay if you sequence breaking a little bit. I mean, the enemies for Wakeport did show up earlier than expected as well, so it is certainly possible to sequence break, so welcome to a little bit of a preview of Mount Pajama Jump. Plus, you get a little bit of a cutscene here, which is kind of cool. Are you sure this is the place? Yeah, this is the place. It's the meeting point for the climbing tour, but where are the tour guides? Oh, and where is the tour? Well, the tour starts in Wakeport. So, uh, we need to go wait to Wakeport to register for the tour. Alas, without the guides and without the actual ability to join a tour, we can't get any further than this point, so we've walked all the way up for nothing. Or, well, they've walked all the way up here for nothing. We've come all the way up here for good shopping! And that guy seems to be very... who sighted, excited, whatever... words. I try to make a hoop and then realize that who sighted does not even... Actually, I don't know. I could see them pulling off something even that poor. They do like to overuse their who's. Anyway, as you can see, not much we can do. Uh, this mountain is begging me to... Hmm, I need to buy a license to poop. You know, you know the jokes already. We'll be seeing a lot more of these guys very soon. Wayport's kind of a townish sort of area, so... We'll have plenty of jokes of that to deal with, so this block is here, we can't really do anything if it, this block is kind of the reason we can't progress, in fact, without a tour. Here lies a hero of buffness, a hero of buffness, okay. The sweaty furrow of the bodybuilding, just... 
there are some interesting things we'll be finding about Pajama Joe, some interesting lore about a guy who vaults people to death. He bench presses people to, basically, he bench presses people to victory. It's fantastic. Anyway, the store is actually here, so these guys will actually sell stuff ahead of the curve. Uh, Wakeport will pretty much... Actually, Wakeport will be selling the weaker stuff here, the, su the Super Boots and the Fighter Hammer. These are actually the best things we can get in Wakeport. But here we have the Heart Boots, the Super Hammer, and some other cool things. So, hammers we actually don't really need. In fact, this, this is actually still equal to the Birthday Hammer. And we'll be getting a really, really, an even better hammer very soon in Wakeport. So, hammer is not anything we need to worry about. The Heart Boots... It's tempting to say that I should get two pairs of these, because they're really good. They restore some of your HP whenever you deal damage. I recommend two of these if you're doing a normal playthrough and not abusing the guard shell. Because, and also I don't know why I never put better boots on Luigi, but... Here you go, Luigi. What do I have on... I have, like... I should be upgrade... I should upgrade, uh... I have better boots to put on Mario. I should... I need to get better boots on him. Anyway, the heart boots though, they recover like 3 or 4 HP, which is really nice in a normal playthrough and you're just taking normal damage all the time anyway if you're not abusing the guard shell. Since I'm in hard mode, damage is massive so that little bit of healing will not really factor in much, plus I'm using the guard shell anyway, so taking damage is not something I normally do. Hence the heart boots aren't as good, we'll be getting a really good pair of boots pretty soon, and spoilers, Wakeport generally deals with uh you being in the dream world, which means I'll put the heart boots on Mario. In fact, I'll probably put the heart boots on Mario now. I'll switch them from Luigi to Mario instead. But, uh, once I have, but because of, I'm normally using, I'm mostly just using one character's power, I don't really need to get these boots now. We'll actually get a slightly better pair of boots way later on, but before we get to Mount Pajamaja. So, I'm not gonna bother buying a second pair of heart boots for those reasons. That being said, fighter wear. Maybe not the best of the normal playthrough because you're looking more for because having speed actually have speed enemies could be useful, but in the and superware by the way is just really good defense, but it doesn't have anything special. This though, 20 boost of power, considering my setup where I have the guard shell and I'm trying to just like bypass the ridiculously hard difficulty of you know extra enemies being extra tough to kill, the fighter aware will boost both of my characters' power immensely and be super helpful. This is actually the reason why I sequence break, because this wear is extremely, it's an extra 20 power. Yeah, Luigi's speed is now one, but speed doesn't matter. You're gonna get outsped first, and then by the, after that point, it doesn't matter. So, otherwise you just have a couple of stat boosts and, the, and an experience boost, nothing really major. So that's all I'm going to do for now in terms of that, but this alone, like, our boots are now supercharged. We already have a really strong hammer, and now we, both bros have an extra 20 power. We are actually pretty strong right now. So I'm going to give Mario, like, well, I said I was going to give Mario the heart boots. Because that makes sense, considering, like I said, dream, lots of Dream World. Then we'll give Luigi, I mean, Luigi's kind of suffering in power overall right now. But that's okay, we'll, we'll boost him back up very soon. But uh, we're just going to give him the coin boots, just for extra coins. It's the same as the snare boots, and the slight chance of ending the turn doesn't really come into play enough, especially... It doesn't come into play enough for it to be worthwhile, and like I said, Luigi's not going to be seeing that much action in the next section. It's mostly going to be Mario, which is why, like I said, I tried and it, it, it's better in Dream Team to kind of focus a little bit on Mario, and what does this bean guy say? Does he say anything relevant about the tour? I'm kind of curious, but uh, that's why I kind of focus a lot on Mario in this playthrough. Also, spoilers, by the way, this is very much a extra stuff episode. Which I know you get a lot, there's some people being like, really like, you're going through this game super slow. I know, but it's the way I play RPGs. So, sorry, but it's just kind of how I do things around here. So, although it would have, it could have been smart to come back here at some other, there's, there we go, one more. This should be actually every single bean in the Pillow Castle area. That's pillows, the Pillow Castle area, and indeed it is, so six beans. I'll go ahead and put the beans on uh, before once once I get the all the beans that we need to get in Wakeport, which there aren't too many in Wakeport. Actually, I can even show that off again right here. Uh, there's only actually 12 beans in Wakeport. We're only gonna be able to get about half of those now, or maybe a little bit more than half. We'll be able to about get about two thirds of them. So not too many beans to get in Wakeport. It's not a very involved area. It's actually gonna be more side quests than anything else. So I mean, it's the town area. It's kind of uh, expected at this point. But, before we do that, there is one more thing I want to show off, because there's actually something new in Pillow Castle as well, and I kind of want to, just because this is kind of a bonus episode anyway, hello Peach, how are you doing? 
Plus, you know, my voice is still a little eh, so I'm trying not to do the most, like, plot-heavy episode, so I can kind of not go too overboard in my voice. But, uh, basically, there's something special we can do up here still. Um, the whole areas over here that were blocked off before are now unblocked, and we can now explore the these areas of Pillow Castle as well. So, um, mostly irrelevant stuff, but there's some really cool stuff going on as well. Well, was it a guy who, uh, was it a guy who's lived here for eons? I mean, who knows? Perhaps we'll find the answer to that question sometime during, uh, these... The playthrough of this game. There we go. Words. It's like really early in the morning. I'm usually not up this early in the morning. I'm kind of doing a really rare morning recording instead of like a night recording. So perhaps I'm a bit out of it and like I said, I'm kind of trying to keep my voice to a minimum just because like it's still not 100%. It's it's getting better. It's definitely on the mend. For some reason, colds affect my voice really heavily, it seems. At least lightly. Which is really annoying when, you know... This is entirely voice! Oops! So, people from all the world gather here. Coffee! I could use some coffee right now. I'm kind of holding out until I have to. I'm heading out to meet some friends later on today. And I'm holding on to go get some Starbucks after before that, so. I don't even have coffee with my sister right now. Why? Am I? No one should ever be awake this early in the morning. Except for, you know, everyone with a normal job or school. I do not miss those days. I am such a, I am such a night person. I am not a morning person. Fun facts. But yeah, this is a little cafe area. It's nothing too exciting. This is not the place where we're going to be excited. The place we're going to get excited from is actually, of course, no knowing me, the last place we're going to check. There's also an area over here. I'm not actually sure what this leads to. Because there's a section here we actually can't do anything with. We cannot jump up here quite yet. We do not have the ability to. So, the question then is, you know, what is up there? And I... Oh, wait. I think I know what's... There's... there's no, maybe? I might know what's up there. It depends on uh, what I'm thinking of. So, hello, I found you, Mr. Guy. Why is everyone here a slacker? I don't even know. But basically, okay, there's one more thing we want to do before I end. Uh, well, before we head to Wakeport, and I'll end the episode right outside Wakeport's doors, and we'll do Wakeport full on in the next episode. It'll be great. But this is what I want to show off. This room! I wonder what it's for. Well, this room is a room we're going to be spending the majority of the extra videos after we finish this game in. But, uh, pe uh apparently, uh, apparently Prince Dreambert, why well, was I going to call him Prince Pillow? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, he's the prince of the pillows, but, man, I am not a morning person. Seriously, this is hilarious. Anyway, uh, basically, this is the battle ring, and you might recognize this sort of format from Bowser's Inside Story. In fact, most of the things that were in Bowser's Inside Story, we will actually come across, or at least all the extra content in Bowser's Inside Story. Dream Team does a lot of the same thing, the battle ring. Basically, you'll dream about fighting fearsome foes that'll be even stronger than before. Basically, it's your super strong boss rush mode that was in uh, Bowser's Inside Story, the cholesterol, whatever that thing was called. I don't remember what it was called at the top of my head, but the thing, basically, extra content stuff. And we actually have uh, the ability to do that in this game as well. Now, I'm not nearly powerful enough to handle any of them. I've actually tried, while it's possible to dodge attacks and do well, um, there's no know about some giant battles, but as you can see, this is why, by the way, I consider Grow Out the first boss of the game, because he's the first ex-boss of the game. So, they don't really recognize the first couple bosses. They like, really uh, give Grow Out that credit. They, recognize, they re recommend level 22 or higher. We're level 12, so... We are very, very much uh, not able to do that. And even with the fighter wear, even if the heart boots, even if both people are having heart boots, um, because heart boots do boost the special attacks that uh, take power from your jump attack, like the green shell and the red shell do. But uh, so actually boosting your jump boosts those specials as well. Fun fact. But basically, you pay coins. You do. You basically fight a really extra hard boss. However, you have a very limited number of turns to do so. Now, if I. Is, if I go in here, it's not going to make me fight him, is it? No. I get to actually uh, do something. You can change ba badges before, and your badge meter will always be res reset when you go into one of these battles, so you cannot bring badges in. You actually have to earn the badges while you're in combat, so... While it works for really cheap ones, like the virus badge uh, combo that I've been using, it doesn't really work necessarily uh, with longer badges, and it's, you have to kind of plan your badges accordingly in order to adapt to these battles. You have a limited number of items, uh, 
to do that, you, so you can't bring in extra items to help you out, you only have a limited number of items. And you have clear conditions, you have to actually beat them in a single turn. A single turn is basically Mario, Luigi, and the enemy all getting one turn. So, uh, that's, that constitutes a turn. So we only have to have six turns to beat them in. With my current power level, I do not have enough power to beat any of these bosses within their time limit. Uh, we have eight turn time limit and eight turn time limit for these two as well. But we do have giant battles. These are not dependent on levels. These are just a harder version of these battles with a turn limit. Now, I'm actually going to do this in this episode, and I'm going to probably do the giant battles right after I do the normal versions of those battles, because obviously every time we do a giant battle, we'll, uh, and there's quite a few slots as you can see here, so in case you're wondering how many slots there is over here, we have quite a few bosses still left in the game as you can see. But uh, we'll be doing lots of these giant battles, and I'm going to do them right after because they aren't dependent on level, and it's just easier to do an X boss right after you beat the normal one because you've already have learned the pattern. They're already very fresh in your mind, so it actually helps to do the uh, giant battles right away. Plus, you get extra coins to buy stuff. So I actually think it's a, it'll be a cool thing to just go back and do these right away because it'll be very helpful. So seven turns to beat this guy. Uh, Rhythm Mushroom cannot be used during these X battles. I think that applies to all of them. So you uh, have to, and basically if you're using the Rhythm Mushroom later on instead of your Bro Tax, you're not gonna have enough turns anyway. To get these, to do the X battles, you have to be pretty much perfect in order for it to work. In fact, I'm actually gonna head out here right now and save because it, it costs 200 coins to try each time. I'd rather save and reset if I, uh, if I fail, I'd rather be able to save, reset, and try again, basically. So that's the plan for that. Uh, we will do the giant battle, it'll be a fun time, and then after we're done with that giant battle, we'll get some extra money, we'll perhaps visit the badge shop and get some badges, maybe, possibly, uh, depending on how long the video is at that point, which will probably be pretty long because I've kind of been talking a lot. Which is funny that I talk a lot. It, this is basically explaining extra content video. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of this in the post game. Pretty much all of these normal boss battles I'm going to be doing in the post game. These ones I'm not going to because it's just easier to do. Like I said, I know the patterns right now. I don't have to relearn any patterns. It makes my life easier. So, here we go back to this format. Let's do the Robo. Let's, we, we, let's do uh, Mr. Robo guy here. We're going to fight him once. And then uh, once we're done with that battle. We will go visit the bad shop and make our way to Wakeport and go ahead and end this episode. In the next episode, Wakeport. But first, we have an X battle to do. If I fail this one for some reason, I'll cut to the point where I fail things. And we'll go from there. But I'm confident I can do this my first try. Otherwise, like I said, it takes so long to relearn the patterns that, uh... And by the way, yes, hard mode does make the X battles even harder because you have to do all the things that they imp that they make more difficult in the X version. You have to do you have to then deal with all of those in the giant battle as well. While being pretty much perfect, because like I said, you pretty much have to be perfect. I mean you can take damage, but you have to get every counterattack, every attack has to be spot on. You really have to master this game in order to do these X battles. It's not the easiest thing. So whenever we have the opportunity we want to get a perfect excellent on our jump because that does the most damage, and like I said, perfection is required for this boss fight. Let's get this underway. Our first X fight, since we're so fresh on beating the original version, we should have no problem with this. He's going straight for this attack, though, so we gotta get ready to counter with our hammer. No! I say no, sir! You get out, you go into that desert cake, and you like it. I should not talk so intensely, I will hurt my throat. Uh, he is obviously in spiky form, so hammer is the, the only option. Just get a nice, excellent attack on that, get a nice another chunk of his health taken out. And uh, rinse and repeat. I mean, we'll see how this goes. Oh, he's not terribly difficult, the X version for this is not the worst. So, uh, I do recommend doing this one because it's not too terribly hard. And it does allow you to get a really, really nice, I mean, you pay 200 coins, so you Forget, don't forget, you know, subtract that from the fee, but if we can get this first try, we're gonna make quite a lot of money, and the more coins I can get, basically, the more I can get the super awesome equipment that's gonna cost a lot later on, because eventually we actually will run out of coins if we don't, uh, if we're not careful, so, they'll just, basically, doing stuff like this will allow us to get even stronger equipment, which, obviously, in hard mode, I'm trying to basically mid-max this run as much as possible, as you can see. Because it's hard mode, this is basically my excuse to just go all out and break this game as much as possible. And getting the extra coins from this does help, so... 
tornadoes. Ha! We've dealt with these before. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this x battle perfectly. I'm not even gonna take a lick of damage. That's how pro I am. I got this, yo. Mr. Guy, think you're so special because you're a giant red robot? I think not. Into the tornado you go, sir. So that's what, three turns so far, I believe? Four turns? Which makes us look, oh man, it's like, oh man, we're, we're not even close to fighting him. But don't forget, there are a few counter attacks we can do that will do quite a huge chunk of damage, including the one I believe he is going to do right now. And indeed he is. And this one's really easy to counter attack too. Just rapid tapping is not a difficult thing to do. So tap 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 No, you don't. And that does a huge chunk of damage. So now, if you're thinking, okay, we're on you know turn four out of seven, we're actually in pretty good shape then. He's, I would say, about four sevenths of the way dead. So it does bode well. Let's pay attention to this. He looks like he's normal, so I can do a jump. And as you can see, there is no attack slot for the bro attacks, no rhythm mushrooms, but like I said, if you're wasting a turn on rhythm mushrooms, you've pretty much already lost. You're going to need every turn, every counterattack, everything in your arsenal in order to be able to stop the, the X modes. They're very, very strict on, your, on the turn limit. Very, very strict. As they should be. I mean, there it really isn't any other way to make this harder anyway, besides having to be perfect. Which is, like I said, why I want to do them right away, because if I already have the rhythms down, it makes the most sense for me to do them right away, because it's essentially the same fight again without just without making mistakes. You're going to go low, aren't you? Yep, he pretty much always is low in the second one, which is, makes sense, because we need to use the hammer anyway in order to knock him in this tornado to do the extra damage. Like I said, perfection, everything you can do to do extra damage, you have to do to do extra damage. A jump and a counterattack of sorts should be enough, so let's make sure we hit this counterattack. Nope! Get out. A jump might be enough from here. I think it's going to require a jump and a counterattack, though, which I think he, um, I mean, he always cycles between these three, so the next one should be him shooting the drills. We should have a chance to cut wait to make sure we get this perfect, though. Oh, you're low again! How dare you! Okay. I don't think this is enough, but a, a perfect counterattack, like I said, every counterattack, every attack has to be perfect or you'll run out of time. Because this is the last turn, by the way. That was our last turn. We have to get this counterattack to win. But we will. Do not fret. Finishing Bros does not count as a turn, by the way, so don't worry. If you get him low enough to go to Finishing Bros, you've won. So, gotta get this perfect. How did I screw that up? No! Hang on! Oops. Uh. Oops. Uh. Oops. I got so excited that I failed! Okay, that's why I saved the game so I don't have to spend the extra coins, because why not save when you can do that? But, uh, I'm gonna reset and I'm going to get back to that point of victory, because it's pretty much the exact same process over again, and we're gonna be victorious. So see you guys in a second. Oh, well that's interesting. This time, basically the fight's been exactly the same this entire time, except he didn't go on the bottom this time, he went on the top. Which means I might be able to just kill him without doing that counterattack, after all, which would be really nice. Yeah, you're all the way up here, buddy. Hello, why are you up here? Die! Is that enough? Please tell me that's enough to just finish him off now. That has to be enough, come on, be enough. You're done, right? Yeah, there we go, so... I guess if you're lucky with the tornado on that very last one, sometimes you, if you don't have to do the hammer, basically if you have to hammer him, you're gonna have to do a counterattack to win. If you don't, you can just do the jump and get the win. So, I guess if if, if you are able to get that last jump, that gives you the wiggle room of one counterattack mess up in order to win. But then you're relying on luck at the end as well, so. There is that. Now, finishing bros, aim at the 3DS. We're gonna go ahead and be victorious. That'll be our very first. I'm not sure, actually, uh... People are saying that Finishing Bros determines the items you get. I don't know if it matters at all when it comes to the X versions, though. It makes sense that it determines the items, although I could have sworn. I ex the reason I didn't think it did when I was... that was That's what I thought it would be, but... When I was, uh... Doing... Oop, I'm gonna be careful here, focus. I could have sworn I've experimented with that to make sure that... To see, uh... 
if that does actually make a difference with the items you get or not, and it didn't. I'm gonna double check the information, but people are saying that basically it affects the items you get, so... I guess that's a thing. Anyway, that was one for the fail montage, so I'm all fine and happy with that. I did reset. I mean, there's no reason not to save and reset to get save a little bit of extra money. I mean, it's 200 coins. It's not the end of the world anyway. But regardless, uh, with that, we have our win. And like I said, the rewards for this are pretty nice. That's an extra 1,200 coins right there. So as you can see, we are pretty much raking in the dough at the moment. We are fairly wealthy. I actually could even sell a few, uh, Items. And I might actually head to the bad shop to do just that. Although I do believe we've spent quite a lot of time in this video already, so I might save the badge hunting for the next episode, or maybe not in the next episode, but the next time we go to a badge store. But that's all we can really do with the battle ring for now. Uh, the normal giant bat, the normal battles, I'm probably not gonna even touch till I'm at post game anyway. Probably. The giant battles, though, like I say, you're just better at them when you do them early on. It's just, it seems to make sense. And then, of course, like I said, the bad shop is over here. It has upgraded its materials a bit, I believe it should have, right? You you have better stuff. You do. It pretty much has everything that we need to have in here. And in case you're wondering, the uh, gear shop over here has actually improved as well. We'll get those two badges very soon, by the way. Uh, pretty sure I'll actually get those two. Actually, you know what? I'll probably just get those two badges now. Let's just get it over with. Uh, they have the, just the really basic hammers in this shop as well. Uh, the item shop is unchanged from last time, so no, no, no need to worry about anything from there. Oh, what the heck, you know what? This is the extra video. Oh, I guess they have a few new things as well, so... This item shop actually has been upgraded. I was incorrect. Cool story, but, uh... Actually, what I should do is I should sell a few items as well. Just while we're here. Um, because singular wear, I don't have any need for... Um... These are obviously poor as well. Anything that's like unique, I'm gonna try to just keep my inventory anyway, but that looks pretty good. A little bit of extra, even more money. Always cool to have. And because we're pretty much good for the next two areas on equipment, what the heck? We're gonna want these anyway. Silver badge and risk badge. Let's just go ahead and get those. We now have every badge possible for this point in the game and 1,600 coins left over for pretty much two whole areas. By the time we're done with Mount Pajamaja, we are gonna be filthy, filthy rich. It's gonna be wonderful. Which would be really nice to have. Um, what am I looking at? I just bought badges, that's right. I'm still spacey. So, risk badge, uh, the different things, combinations, either fully charges the badge meter or resets it, pretty cool. Uh, gives everyone, everyone a random stand, status effect, obviously not the most useful thing. This could be useful, gives everyone a power boost, since I have the guard shell and the guard badges, them increasing in power is not that big of a deal. It didn't increase in power for me, though. Could be really nice. So that could potentially be another combination with the defense learning badge. Increase power to us, decrease defense to them. Lots of power. I might experiment, actually, with this combination, which is why I actually bought the risk badge and the silver badge. It's not a bad combination when you have guard shells. And then, uh, this one either fully recovers Mario's and Luigi's HP or drops in the one. This is why the secret box is so risky, because the secret box can do... Basically, what the secret box does, it does any of these badge effects. Any possible badge effect in the game, it can do. Which means it could actually accidentally drop all of our HP to one. Which is why the secret box is pretty risky to use, because you don't want to accidentally die. And then the silver badge is the other new one. Uh, restores 50% of each bro's BP. Uh, which is always good. Extra BP is also very useful. That's uh, that could be something I use. 50 damage to all enemies. Uh, this is also a very good one. Uh, once you use this, your badge meter will charge even faster during that battle. So if you're in a long boss fight, you pop this at the beginning, you'll be able to get even more badges throughout the entire thing. So this could actually be something I add to my repertoire, especially when I have more available badge slots. So I'll be keeping that in mind. Might turn any foe into a mushroom. Obviously bosses it won't work with. But, uh... And then we've seen the power one before, so... We're gonna keep it as it is for now, um, mostly using the defense down and the guard badges. But I might throw in the... I might throw in a couple of those there. The, the BP heal is always nice. The, uh, increasing everyone's power could be useful with my setup. There's definitely potential there. Anyway, I've dragged this video on for a very long time. I guess I'm just really talky in the morning. I guess I don't mind this being a longer video just because it's kind of a extra content video and whatnot, and then I kind of threw the badges whimsically at the end there, just because at that point, since I got the extra 1200, I may as well get the badges, you know? 
There's a bad shop in Wakeport though, so I could have gotten it there, but it'll save us time in Wakeport and make that section go quicker, which is a bit more important to me. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly fight one of these guys, because I just want to show the difference in power that all this extra equipment that I got earlier in this episode is. Because we saw how hard these guys were to fight before, and this, these are the enemies of Wakeport, obviously. We've seen how, we've seen how they are, but now, look at the power difference. Look how quickly I can kill enemies with this new setup. Because this enemy is about to get squashed by Luigi's Hammer. I can basically just massacre these guys now. So these guys were actually pretty tough for me to kill back in the desert. Now with the extra levels and the extra power from the pajama gel items, you can see how I'm going to kind of steamroll Wakeport now. Because these guys are no... Would have been a threat if I didn't screw that up. I, I'm i very much paying attention right now. You die! Get out of here. Even then, once you take their... Basically, these guys are super easy now. And hey, a level up to end our episode with. Very exciting. So level 12, always fun. I believe power is what we're going for. So Luigi gets even more power. I'm going to focus. I'm going to get this. Skiddly douche. 49 power. So Luigi's looking pretty right now. You beautiful little plumber, you. And uh, from here, let's make our way to the edge of Wakeport, and we will enter Wakeport in the... You get away from me, crab. Not interested in buying what you're selling. But in the next episode, guys, we're going to be doing Wakeport. It's going to be good times. The, uh, the path is clear. Wakeport is open for business. And we're going to go raid the town of all of its loots and valuables. There's actually a lot of side questy stuff to do in... Uh, Wakeport, so we're going to be spending the next four to five episodes probably uh, dealing with the plot in Wakeport for a couple episodes and then dealing with some side quest stuff for a couple episodes, so expect more side questy stuff. It is the town of the area, but we're going to be getting some really good stuff in Wakeport, so our characters are going to get nice and purdy for the next uh, few sec sections of the game. We're going to be very, very well equipped now. So this is Lucky7DX signing out in the next episode. Wakeport begins! See you guys there. Bye-bye.